Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining in. So we've uh, taken the power wagon and camper out on a few trips now and overall things have been working out really well. Although I did have an issue recently pop up with the way I installed the ARB twin compressor. So uh, as I work to resolve that issue, I thought I'd go ahead and see if I can improve my tire inflation times as well. So uh, let's take a look at the setup. Overall, I've been pretty happy with the ARB twin compressor and the way I installed it. It's down here in this cubby, and even with the uh, seat down, it gets plenty of airflow. Now, uh, what I don't like is the way I've installed the power switch. Here on the side, I have a tendency to bump it whenever I'm reaching into the vehicle, so I need to change that. Now, also, I have uh, hoses routed to both sides of the vehicle with these uh, quick couplers here. That allows me to have a uh, really short filler hose. But this filler hose is pretty small in diameter and it kinks easily. In fact, I've already got a small kink in it. So I'm going to replace this with a larger diameter rubber hose. And uh, there's a more serious problem as well. So I recently went on a family camping trip that involved some beach driving. And when I was airing the tires back up on the fourth tire, this hose separated under pressure just as you saw it. Now, in my opinion, the fitting here on the uh, compressor side got warm enough to soften up the uh, hose material. And this crimp style connection just wasn't strong enough to hold everything in place. So I'm going to be uh, replacing this cheap hybrid hose that I found on Amazon with this uh, stainless steel counterpart. Now, uh, this is made in the USA by an industrial supplier and it's rated up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and 1000 PSI. So uh, I think the whole truck could probably blow up and this hose might still be intact. You know, it takes quite a lot of effort to get these big off-road tires pumped up to their 60 PSI street pressure. So to help reduce the heat and the overall strain on the compressor, I've decided to go ahead and add some air storage capacity. Now I wanted something that uh, I could store inside the truck and something that would work with my existing setup. So I looked through a bunch of options and I was initially considering just uh, putting a pipe in the back of the truck that would span the width of the truck and replace the rubber hoses I have in there now. But uh, after a lot of thought and a bunch of searching through different options, I think I finally found something that's a lot more practical. Okay, so after a lot of time and researching the various options, this is what I finally decided on. This is an aluminum air tank, so it's lightweight, it's never going to rust, and uh, it wasn't very expensive as well. Now, it has a capacity of just less than two gallons, which should help to reduce the cycle time on my compressor, and also reduce the amount of time it takes me to air up all four tires. And uh, relative to most air tanks that you see, this one has a pretty small diameter and an elongated shape, which means that it'll fit underneath the uh, rear seat there with a little bit of extra clearance just where I wanted it so that uh, it'll keep it out of the elements. So in concept this is very similar to my pipe idea except of course um, this is purpose-built so I'm not going to be concerned about it exploding and it already has pre-drilled ports so overall this is just a more practical solution. Okay I think I have everything I need here I just need to go ahead and install these fittings. Now um, this uh, port here this will be the port I use for my input which means my stainless steel hose will be attached to this. So I need an adapter. This is a quarter inch NPT threaded. And uh, I have an adapter here, which is a quarter inch NPT on one side, which will screw in here. And the other side is quarter inch JIC. Now the uh, JIC adapter doesn't require any uh, thread sealant. And it also has a uh, swivel here. So it allows the hose to be easily screwed on and screwed off. So when I need to drain the tank, I'll be able to unscrew the hose here and uh, just hold the tank upside down and drain it. Now on the sides, these are actually um, 3 8 inch NPT. So I have a 3 8 NPT on one side and a barb on the other side. So these will go into the sides here and then I'll attach my uh, rubber hose on each side of the uh, tank. One will go to the driver's side of the truck and one will go to the passenger side of the truck. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm working on. Let me get started. Okay, I think the uh, fittings are in there and I don't expect to see any leaks on this, but uh, we'll find out in a minute. Now I have one more fitting, but uh, this goes onto the uh, compressor. Okay, so it's time to uh, replace this kink prone hose with one that uh, won't kink. This is a Tecton, it's a 10 foot hybrid hose, 
3 8 diameter and uh, it's made in the USA. So now I just need to take these fittings off and uh, transplant them onto this one. Okay, so we're uh, ready to go with this uh, nice new hose. Okay, so I have the uh, tank just sitting here loosely. I don't have it strapped down to the truck yet. But uh, last night I went ahead and assembled all the fittings and put the hoses together and that just to see if I have any leaks. Now I didn't detect any leaks, so I went ahead and put a bit of uh, air inside the tank and let it sit overnight. So now I'm checking to see if I uh, still have air pressure in the tank. Now I don't have a gauge attached, and so I don't know exactly how much uh, pressure I've lost overnight. But I know approximately how much pressure I had by the amount of air that was coming out here. And uh, honestly, that's roughly the same. So I don't have any major leaks for sure. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this good enough. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the next step, which is getting the tank strapped down. Okay, so I'm using this board here as a sort of a platform to mount some of my gear underneath the rear seat of the power wagon. I actually posted a video on this recently. Now uh, the air tank will be mounted right here underneath the seat. And um, the air tank did ship with a couple of brackets like this. And these are pretty nice brackets, but uh, the problem is, is that uh, they're too tall and uh, they don't provide enough clearance to the rear seat. So uh, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna be strapping the air tank directly down to this platform using these rubber straps, just like I'm doing with the uh, tools here. Now, uh, the problem that I ran into is that uh, the uh, cylindrical air tank sitting on a flat platform had a tendency to roll around a little bit. So I've resolved that using these wedges here. I just made uh, six wedges out of some scrap wood and I coated them in some plasti dip just to kind of give them a, a anti-slip coating. And uh, then I glued them down to this platform. So let me grab the tank. So now the tank can't roll backwards and it can't roll forwards. And then I can secure it with these rubber straps. And uh, now it's nice and secure and there's no metal to metal contact anywhere. And uh, when I need to do maintenance to the tank, if I need to uh, tighten a fitting or drain the tank, it's really easy just to unbuckle these and uh, pull the tank straight out. So uh, now I just need to get everything back into the truck. Okay, so we're back at the truck. Let's take a look at the uh, final installation. So as you remember, I had the uh, switch mounted up here. It's mounted uh, in these two holes here, and I reused one of the holes to um, attach a nail bracket, and then I mounted the switch here into this recess so that uh, it's no longer in my way. It's kind of out of the way, yet I can still reach underneath the seat and turn it on or off easily enough. Now, uh, just so it doesn't look so bad, that uh, second hole, I put one of these little plastic uh, push rivets in there I bought from Amazon a whole bunch of them, and uh, that worked out pretty well. It doesn't look like a, a big gaping hole now. It looks kind of factory. So um, that worked out pretty well. And then uh, here's my compressor, and uh, here, of course, is the uh, stainless steel hose, and it kind of snakes this way underneath the uh, shovel. So underneath the um, this gap here where it kind of ramps up, that's where the uh, stainless hose is going so that it doesn't actually touch the uh, shovel. And then that's where it attaches to the tank. And if you look over to this side, you see a 3 8 hose, and that comes out over here to this uh, quick coupler on the driver's side. And then on the other side of the uh, air tank is another 3 8 hose, and that goes out to the uh, passenger side. There's another quick coupler over there. I removed the uh, tools that were mounted there just so you could see everything. And uh, there is plenty of clearance. It doesn't look like it, but when I shut the seat, you can kind of see the uh, air tank there. It's actually not touching the seat. There's probably more clearance than what it looks like. There's not much clearance to that uh, shovel though. But uh, otherwise, I think this installation went uh, pretty well. So um, now I just need to test out the tank and see if I can improve my uh, tire inflation times. Now before installing the air tank, I was actually able to use this air nozzle here, but uh, just barely. What I'd have to do is I would turn on the compressor and allow the air hoses to uh, pressurize. And then I could get a... Uh, blast of air from the air nozzle, but then the compressor would have a hard time keeping up and I'd have to wait and let the hoses pressurize again. Of course now with the air tank installed that's no longer a problem. I'm getting a lot of pressure out of the air nozzle and it's a nice continuous flow.
And I was definitely not able to run any air tools like this before. So the whole idea with adding air storage capacity was to give me the option to uh, fill up an air tank ahead of time before I actually need to inflate the tires. That way when I go to fill up the tires, I have some air stored up and the uh, air compressor is not running constantly the entire time. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and fill up my air tank to its capacity. I'm going to use these deflators here to deflate all four tires down to 20 PSI, just like I would do off-road. Then I'm going to uh, see how much time it takes me to fill up the uh, tires back up to the 60 PSI street pressure. Now, I've already recorded the amount of time it took me to fill up my tires before installing the air tank. So I'll be able to compare those two values to uh, see how much time the air tank install is saving me. Okay, I have all four tires adjusted to exactly 20 PSI. Let's uh, start the timer. minutes and 51 seconds. Okay, so the overall time it would take me to fill up the tires prior to the air tank install was about 14.1 minutes. Now after installing the air tank, that time's down to about 12.85 minutes. So that's about a one minute time savings or about the 8.9% reduction in time. Of course, that assumes that I filled up the tank ahead of time. Now, uh, the girls don't really like to wait around for me to fill up the tires after an off-road trip. So that should make the girls happy and uh, reducing the amount of heat and the cycle time on the compressor should help to extend its life a bit and that should make the compressor happy. And uh, now I can run air tools, so I guess that should make me happy. So uh, I'm pretty happy overall with this uh, update that I've done to the compressor and the setup. And uh, that's all I have for today's video and we'll see you next time.